this year we decided, since we went in a mixed group, to see how they treated Christina versus me or Ed versus Jesus. Kelly and Colin worked as the obvious U.S. tourist team. Maybe they overplayed their roles. Their first purchase was derailed by having only large bills. In desperation, they turned to the video crew, who are all well known for having small bills. Do you guys have change for a Yeah. I thought we're not involved. They had to leave empty-handed. Many of the Maya people worked in the coffee industry. They lived their lives on coffee plantations called fincas. Me pongo de ejemplo, por ejemplo, mis abuelos nacieron y se murieron en la finca. Many years ago, my people lived lives of poverty working for the finca owners. My grandparents were born and died on the finca. My father and mother were born on the finca, and I was born on the finca. So, when I was 11 years old, I had to begin working on the finca. In 1963, a young priest, Father Greg Schaefer, arrived from Minnesota. He immediately began to organize food programs to help the community. In 1972, in an effort to raise money, he and two others decided to walk 3,000 miles from St. Paul, Minnesota to San Lucas Tolimán. Over the years, Father Gret has continued his fundraising efforts to purchase land, give it to the people to farm, build houses, and establish medical clinics and schools. His original five-year assignment turned into 40. To the people in San Lucas, he is an icon. Our next stop was Santa Catarina, a small farming village. Each town along the lake has a signature weave that is embedded in all of their designs. The work of the weavers of Santa Catarina is highly prized. They are known for their distinctive blue and purple pattern. This time, Kelly and Colin were finally able to make a purchase. I'm sure the vendor must have wondered why tourists would be interested in buying beans. Each little town along the lake was completely different. Like for example, in Santa Catarina, they weren't very open to tourists in like the middle of town which is really odd because as soon as you get off the boat, they're usually all over you wanting you to buy things. At the end, we had noticed that actually it was the one that was getting like the best prices and everything. It's probably because I look more native or something. We began to plant our coffee on our own land, but when we sold our coffee, it was at a very low price. So many now own their land, but the world market prices were low. In 1992, Father Greg decided to form a business which will sell the coffee in form of direct trade, eliminating the middlemen and giving the farmers the increased profit. And this is the coffee we're selling. Now, it's true the parish does not purchase all of the coffee in San Lucas because there is so much of it. However, the parish is purchasing from 700 families and what they are doing is paying a fair price at 200 quetzals per 100 pound bags of coffee fruit. These families are able to gain a just price for the labor and it's something that helps them significantly. I couldn't believe my eyes as this boy swung a machete to make our coconut drinks. Car seat toting parents in the U.S. would be horrified. These children were clearly in the tourism business, helping their families survive. Our audio man tried a flute. Colin tried a drum. So I understand that our market in the United States is not very big right now, but I am a person of hope, and it is my hope that one day 
that we will be able to have a larger market. Entonces, cada año, yo mi esperanza es de que algún día podemos tener un mercado más grande. As the day ended and we traveled back to San Lucas, I thought about what Andres told me regarding his vision for their coffee. I couldn't help but wonder about this amazing country of great beauty and the happiness of its people. I was inspired by the work of Father Greg. Could we market this coffee in a way that would truly make an impact in their lives? Drifting on the water, I think we all dreamed we could.